Welcome to micro communication course. Today we learn a measurement of a, a power here. So how to measure a microwave power that we'll see here. So to understand that a power measurement, so we supposed to know that for a given particular signal, how much will be the a power level. And based on that power level, we supposed to use a various power measurement device or various power sensor for measurement of a, a microwave power level. So how much is the power transmitted by the wave or that power transmitted through the guide so that can be measured through the microwave devices. So we consider here a different power meters or a different power measuring devices here. Now uh, we see here the various power measurements. So in this case, we are supposed to know that what are the various powers to be measured. So there are the power measurement device. They are categorized based on the what will be the power level present in the a device. There. So we consider there a three categories. One is about a low power measurement. So that low power measurement is about less than 10 milliwatt. Second one is about a medium power. That medium power it will from the range from the 10 milliwatt to a 10 watt here and a third is about a high power that high power is about greater than the 18 watt now these are about the different microwave powers they are categorized in a low power medium power and a high power here Generally, we are supposed to learn that a high power measurement and that high power measurement can be done using the, the calorimetric method or a bridge method. So we use a two types of a measurement here. One is about the calorimetric means we are supposed to consider the water there and we are supposed to measure the temperature using the sensor. and in a bridge method, balance bridge method. So, after applying the microwave power, so that device get heated and their temperature rises. And because of that rise in a temperature, there will be increase in a resistance or a decrease in a resistance. There are two types of sensor. When we apply a microwave power to the sensor, there will their temperature rises because that device gets heated and because of that temperature rise there will be a change in the resistance one device their resistance decreases another device their resistance increases there so means we say here in another way it is about a positive temperature coefficient or a negative temperature coefficient so now so what are those sensors used for the measurement now we will see one by one those sensors used for the a measurement. One is about a bolometer or a, we, we can say that a bolometer sensor. Okay, so we talk about first a sensor here and even uh, we can use a Schottky diode sensor there, Schottky barrier diode as a sensor in a micro power sensor there and uh, through that we can measure the a power here. so if you see here so how that structure for this a short key barrier diode sensor and then we talk about that a bolometer sensor first of all we talk about first a short key barrier diode sensor 
now in this uh, short key barrier uh, sensor so if we apply the rf signal to the sensor here that is about what we say rf in here this one is about a circuit and we have the short key barrier diode here this one is about a short key barrier diode. this one is about a rf in and this one is about nothing but a rf out here now this sensor is used to measure the microwave power that is a low microwave power that low as a minus 70 dBm. dBm stands for what we take a ratio with respect to 1 milliwatt so that will get the power in terms of a dBm otherwise if you multiply with the power 3 year Okay, so then we will get that ratio in terms of a dB. So that is about a logarithmic scale. Now this diode behaves as a, a square wave detector and it provides the output in the form of a current there. So when we apply the RF input here to the device, so then your output will changes because your power, you, what you can say that a RF on the RF applied to this particular diode then the diode temperature changes and the resistance changes which in this case here diode resistance is nothing but a function of a temperature here and that depends upon that what will be the input power here so, and through that your current because of this RF input changes in the resistance of the and that's why the current is propagating through the diode. So we'll get the RF output, that RF output that is proportional to the a current there. And that current is depend output current, it is depending upon that what will be the RF input we apply here. Okay, so that is about a low power measurement device, the short key barrier diode. Then another device we use here that is about a a bolometer sensor that bolometer sensor is used in a a bridge meter there so generally there are a two micro me measurement okay so one is about what you can say a bridge meter this one is used for the medium power measurement and another one is about a, a calorimetric method There are the two methods we say. Now in the bridge method, there is a a balanced bridge. Okay, so just like we can we see that a arrangement of the circuit as a balanced bridge there. When we apply the RF in the bridge, bridge get unbalanced. Okay. And based on this unbalanced bridge there. So we are major. We are able to measure that how much is the power propagating through the device through the bridge, and with respect to that, whatever the variation in the resistance, or what will be the variation in that bridge there of unbalanced one. So that is the principle used in a bridge method there. So now in this case here, that bridge is used to measure the power. Okay, so unbalanced, whatever the unbalance occurs because of that RF supply, RF input, the bridge will unbalance and that is used to measure the a power there. So now, here we consider that in a bridge, a sensor. And that sensor is about, we can talk about the a bolometer sensor. And that bolometer sensor is based on the change in the resistance due to the rise in the temperature. How that temperature rises? because of that RF input okay whatever the RF input we apply to the device then that RF will be absorbed by the device then because of that absorption there will be rise, rise in a temperature and because of that rise in a temperature then there will be a variation in the resistance okay that is called as a, a bolometer sensor okay so we 
consider here in a balance bridge method what what about the uh, ebullimeter sensor here first and then we talk about that uh, what is a bridge so in the case of ebullimeter here we apply the rf here there will be rise in a temperature and then because of the rise in the temperature there will be a variation in the resistance now that resistance i say variation in the resistance it will be increased resistance or decrease in the resistance okay so that's why there are in a bolometer sensor there are the two types of a a bolometer there generally we say that a bolometer sensor there are the two types of bolometer sensor so in which one it is use a barrettor and another is about a, a thermistor okay now if you consider that a use of a barrettor there then what happen here so there will be what when we apply the rf signal here so there will be a change in the temperature there okay change in the temperature so there will be a change in the resistance so what is the change is change in the resistance occur when we apply okay if you consider that a barrier barrettor here whose when we apply the rf signal there there will be change in the temperature means temperature increases there if there is a change in the temperature then again their resistance is again increases here in the case of a barrettor we say that there will be a changes in the resistance okay that resistance changes with respect to the temperature temperature changes again a resistance changes. so that's why what we can say here it is about a a positive temperature coefficient we say that your device acts as a what you can say it is about a positive temperature coefficient but in the case of a thermistor here so thermistor what happen here when we consider that a rf input applied to the device there so there will be a changes in the temperature rise in the temperature there okay in that case temperature increases resistance decreases okay there is a fall in a temperature with a rise in a, a temperature fall in a resistance with a rise in a temperature so in that case we say that it is about a negative temperature coefficient this device you can say that it operates in the negative temperature coefficient region okay so now these are the a bolometer sensor that are used in a bridge to measure the what will be the rf power applied okay so that is about a measurement of a, a power now if you see that a this one by one component that is about a, a barrettor barrettors and uh, this is a thermistor here so how much is the power level measured by this particular device so generally a barrettor is nothing but a thin short platinum wire that is used to measure the low microwave power okay so we can say that here the barrettor is used to measure the low power okay that is about a, a low power now in the case of a thermistor here just see right here okay it is about what you can say that a barrettor is about what a low power measurement okay that is useful for the measurement of a low power there so now what because we say that there will be changes in the resistance there that then changes the resistance occur when we apply a power so in that in that case so what will be the change occur the change is about a phi ohm with respect to a milliwatt when we apply the rf input so with respective 1 milliwatt of a power so there will be a changes of a a 5 ohm of a resistance there so that's why this particular barrettor device or a barrettor here it is nothing but a very sensitive and that's why it is to be used for the very low power major very low power level measurement there generally it is about a in terms of a few milliwatt there next about a thermistor so thermistor it is about a positive temperature coefficient here a thermistor 
a thermistor if you consider that resistance pulse okay sorry a battery is about a positive temperature coefficient and thermistor is about a negative temperature coefficient okay thermistor is about a negative temperature coefficient because if we increase the we apply the rf input temperature increases but there will be decrease in the resistance so that's why we can say that a negative temperature coefficient we can say that here a resistance decreases okay when we apply the power there so there will be change in the a resistance now here if you consider that this uh, volumeter sensor that is used for the measurement of a low power as well as the high power using the thermistor using the thermistor we can use this uh, sensor to measure the low micro power as well as the high micro power so now what about the change in the resistance how come there is a change in the resistance that is about a 60 over per milliwatt of a incident microwave power there so means we say that there is a variation in the resistance that is about a 60 ohm with respect to that whatever the incident microwave power okay per milliwatt so that is about a thermistor so now in this case here that bridge is used here so we'll draw here a circuit of a a micro power measurement using a volumeter sensor there and uh, we consider that a, a volumeter bridge here so we suppose to consider that either there will be a barrettor or there will be a thermistor okay so any anyone will be there in the given particular device but the if you consider that a barrettor or a thermistor we supposed to know that what happened when we apply a microwave power or a rf input to the device and then we should know that whether there will be changes in the resistance or increase in the resistance or decrease in the resistance okay so positive temperature coefficient or a negative temperature coefficient so here we supposed to apply the dc supply this to this device this regulated power here then we need to measure that what will be the current propagating through the device here that is about a milliampere current that is propagating through the device and here we supposed to measure that how much is the exactly voltage we are applying to the device here. okay that's about a vd here and then then what will be the the bridge circuit component there okay so here because there will be changes in the environment okay so environment temperature if it is increases so then your bridge will be unbalanced is even if uh, even if we are apply we are not applying any supply without any rf input your bridge will unbalance so that's why to balance the bridge or we supposed to get the exact value so we you need to use another thermistor and what will be, whatever the environmental changes occur that can be balanced to the another thing so instead of using only a one device okay one uh, sensor uh, we are supposed to use a two different sensors in the given circuit this one is about a balanced bridge circuit here we have a thermistor this one is about your thermistor so of the barrettor i suppose to see here it is about a thermistor okay so thermistor is about we can say that resistance decreases if we increase the temperature there okay this one is about a two device we supposed to use but where we have to apply the rf power here on this particular bridge that rf power is to be applied apply the rf signal to this given particular bridge there and then what happened we need to measure that what will be the change occur okay that is about with respect to that is about a micro 
Okay, that is what is small current variation. Okay, so that is a bridge needs to be balanced. So now all the values in a DC, not AC, anything is nothing is the AC here. It is everything is about a DC. Now these are the resistors used. Okay, so to vary the whatever the input we supposed to be apply here. Okay, so we can say that our circuit is about a bridge now, only bridge we are supposed to consider R1, R2, R3 here, and R4, these are the resistance value. And this one is about a another component we are supposed to be considered here. So this one we say here, this R6 and R4, both are same here. Okay, so why this one? Because if anything occur, any changes occur, environment changes occur, the bridge will get unbalanced. For this particular purpose, another sensor is to be used here. Now, generally, it is about a initial case with the before applying the power that this bridge is to be balanced there. And here, a one of the arm of the bridge, there is a polometer sensor. I say here, this one is about a thermistor now. Okay, instead of a polometer, I suppose to say this one is about a thermistor to measure the medium power. Okay. So now when we apply the RF signal, microwave power, when microwave power incident on this one of the arm of this a bridge here, then that this particular arm changes the resistance. Okay. And then because of that change in the resistance, that bridge get unbalanced. And whatever the amount of unbalanced takes place due to the applying the RF signal here, so that is proportional to the a microwave power and that micro power we supposed to use any amplifier here to measure that what will be the microwave power or uh, changes whatever the unbalance is there so we supposed to use the amplifier to measure that particular value okay so that is about what you can say a principle of a uh, micro measurement using a, a balance bridge method so now an another thing is about here so here another sensor is used for the sensitivity purpose because device is sensitive according to the ambient temperature so that's why we supposed to use a another device here so that whatever the unbalance occur due to the rf uh, environment temperature or environment so that can be measured there, okay through this device now in the case of a circuit, these are the different resistors used. Now these are a identical one, R2, R4, R1, R2. These are that. So that's why we say that a bridge is supposed to be a balanced one. Okay. Now this one, RF, R4 and R6, these are the thermistors. So these are nothing but a same values to be used. Okay. So if any changes occur, so R, this will be at the same time, both will be ticked. Okay, value variation in the resistance occurs. Okay, but only that applying the RF signal to this device is of this one. Okay, only applying this RF uh, micro signal to the this thermistor. Okay. Next is about another sensor we supposed to consider that or measurement of a power that is about a, a calorimetric method. calorimetric method measurement of a, a microwave power now this one is used to measure the high microwave power there okay for a high power because we say earlier there are the three categories of a power measurement one is about low power measurement for a low power measurement we can use a barrettes there for the high power measurement or a medium power measurement we can use sorry low power measurement and a medium power measurement we use a thermistor there and then a high power measurement we supposed to use a, a calorimetry method for the high power measurement there so in this case here when we consider that a micro or a micro power applying to the device there so then what happened that device get device absorb that particular micro power and it get heated there and we supposed to measure that what 
changes what what will be the heat okay be whatever whatever the signal absorb in terms of the heat there okay so that is about the uh, calorimetric method for the measurement of a microwave power there. so that because that device gets heated there and that's why there there will be a changes in the a temperature okay because microwave power absorb in the device uh, here we say in uh, material that material is about a water okay so microwave power will be absorb or a dielectric any dielectric any water or a dielectric any liquid okay so when we apply the microwave power that liquid get heated because it absorb the micro signal and because of that heating the uh, that uh, device get heated so there will be a variation in the temperature of the given liquid or a, a dielectric there and we use to measure that what changes in the temperature occur so now simple circuit for this simple setup for this measurement here this one is about a pump to so that whether it will be liquid or any whatever the dielectric is measured here so we should consider here right now a liquid is flowing through the a microwave device okay so this one is about your you can say that a flow meter or we can say that a water okay so instead of that a liquid we are supposed to consider that a water no, no nothing no changes occur there okay so i suppose to draw here this one is about a flow meter we are supposed to measure that how much is the flow of the water there and that particular flow of the water is supposed to propagating through the okay wave guide there okay so this one So here, we we'll have guide now. Okay. When the board you, we we'll have guide now. Okay. Now this one, we consider here. This one is about your net here, and. we can see the now okay so now through this wave guide your signal is that water or your liquid is supposed to be propagating through it okay so now this one is about a inlet and a outlet now so this one is about a flow meter here your water outlet here so we can consider that Okay, so what we can say that, sorry, this one is about the water outlet here. Water outlet, and here we are supposed to consider a pump. This one is about a pump here, and to that, this one is about a water inlet okay so this one is about a water inlet here so your water will be through this inlet okay then will be pumping through the device here then here we need to measure that what will be the a inlet temperature Okay, here at this case here we supposed to measure that inlet temperature, and here another sensor we supposed to measure that outlet temperature. Okay, so this one so means your water is flowing through the guide now, wave guide, and here in a RF wave guide here we consider that supposed to be RF input signal when you rf signal is propagating through this guide here so there will be a device this one through that guide this one is about a tube okay this one is about a glass tube so through this glass tube consider that glass tube here and this one is about your 
wave guide. Okay, this one is about your wave guide. This one is about your a glass tube. This one is about a glass tube. So now a water is propagating through this a glass tube here. Okay, here. So at this particular point, when we apply the RF inlet here, so because of that RF signal, the water get heated. Or whichever the liquid we are supposed to consider, that liquid get heated. And because of that liquid get heated, there is a rise in a temperature of the given liquid. Okay, that water get heated. So there is a rise in a temperature of the water. So before flowing that water through this guide, so we need to measure the temperature. So that's why it is about here inlet temperature. And here, when it come out from this wave guide, so we need to measure the another at another temperature. That's why we can say that's about a outlet temperature. Okay. When we can say that power flowing through the guide, when we apply the RF input, RF signal, then that water get heated and we supposed to measure that a temperature. That is about an inlet temperature and a outlet temperature. So what will be the incident power? Uh, okay, that is about RF input. It is depending upon that what will be the flow of this particular liquid or your water. Then the specific gravity of this particular water or a liquid we have. Okay, and then a specific heat in terms of a uh, whatever the liquid we supposed to consider. Okay, so that's why we are supposed to measure the power, that power is equal to, P is equal to 4.18, this one is about the velocity, okay, we can say that rate of flow of that liquid or you can say that a water here and then we are supposed to use that specific heat that's about a Cp here Then how much is the rise in a temperature there. Okay, through that we are supposed to measure that a power in terms of a watt. Okay, that is about a power measurement in terms of a watt. So that's all about what we can say that a power measurement. We use here a measurement of a power. We consider that a calorimetric method there, and we are supposed to measure that what will be the power. Uh, changes in the temperature of this particular liquid or a water there. And that based on that the RF input. So directly we will get the power with respect to a changes in the a temperature of the water there. Okay, so that is about what we can say here. A power measurement, micro power measurement there. So we have seen that there are the okay, low power measurement and high power measurement there. And another Another sensor we can use that is about a thermocouple. Okay, so that thermocouple is uh, providing you that how much is the power propagating through the a device. There. Okay, thermocouple sensor. Couple sensor. Okay, this one is about a, a thermocouple sensor. Now, in a thermocouple sensor, it has a if you see a thermocouple sensor, it has two different metal contacts. So one is about, you can say, hot and a cold junction. Okay, so for a given particular, a thermocouple. I was to draw a diagram here. Okay, so here we have the junction that is hot and cold here. And we need to measure that when we apply microwave power or a RF input to the device, so what will happen to the to this particular a thermocouple there. Okay, so this one a thermocouple here another resistor another thermocouple here here about a two thermocouples are used and here we are supposed to apply that a RF input signal. Now, we can say that this junction is a cold one, one is about a hot one, alternately here, so this one is about a hot, this 
silicon in the body cold so it has the two different metals contact and we can suppose to consider that they have a two different spots now that's about a hot and cold junction when we apply the microwave power to the junction there so in that case what happened heat is developed across this at the particular junction there so if supposed to be apply the rf input to one of the end here okay so any one end so in that case one get heated and another get one uh, one junction will be heated and another will be cold there okay so this way we can say that when you apply the rf input there so so due to that apply the uh, rf input there will be changes in the temperature across the junction and because of that temperature difference across these particular two ends of this uh, thermocouple there so there will be changes in the emf or that field will be generated here because of that very change the temperature and we supposed to measure that what will be the generated emf because of that changes in the temperature of that hot end with respect to that a cold end here okay so that depends upon that what will be the incident rf okay so here we can say that a emf is generated by this a two parallel thermocouple and that will be emf generated that will be across this particular capacitor here and that capacitor is called as the bypass capacitor and then output is it is in the form of a a dc voltage and it is measured using the directly dc voltmeter there okay so that's why we we calculate that okay, what will be the incident microwave power that is applied to the given device so that with respect to that what will be the changes in the a temperature arc okay this one so this thermocouple if you consider that these are very sensitive to the variation in the temperature and then we suppose use a sensitive uh, very sensitive uh, which uh, this uh, dc voltmeter there okay for measurement of a, a microwave power so that's all about your micro power measurement so next uh, we consider that a measurement of a a q of a, a cavity there okay measurement of q of cavity okay that is about it we need to measure the quality factor that is about a q for the given particular cavity generally q is equal to what a twice pi of maximum energy stored maximum energy stored per energy dissipated okay energy dissipated per cycle okay that is about your q here okay that you can say a q or you can say that whatever the maximum energy stored for a power dissipated there so in that another way we can consider that omega maximum energy stored or we can say that is of the energy there we say that a power it dissipated okay that is about a q here so this will gives us the what will be the q of the a cavity there so for any cavity there so that q is depending upon the uh, for a, uh, that is the, what will be the uh, cavity length and all okay so we talk up we have seen already earlier that for a cavity what will be the resonant frequency of the cavity and they based on the resonant frequency of the cavity so effective bandwidth of the device can be measured there and it is depending upon that what will be the a size of the cavity size of the a cavity there. so we consider that what are the basic blocks of the micro measurement one is about a source here source supply okay there is about one block 
then about whatever the source we have supposed to consider that then we consider that a tunable source just like we say that if it is a rf uh, that klistron one in that case this is about a klistron power source and then a klistron supply okay klistron rf reflex klistron okay then isolator okay after that match alternator okay after that cavity for which cavity we supposed to measure the Q here then standing wave detector okay and after that standing wave detector then we consider that here a power indicator or a power meter and we consider that in matched termination okay or matched load here so in this case here so this one is about a a measurement of a q here for a given particular a Q cavity measurement here. If you see that measurement of a Q can be done using the a transmission method or using the VSWR method. Okay, so here we supposed to consider that a measurement of a Q using the a transmission method. Okay, this is called as a, a transmission method. This one is called as a Now, in the case of a transmission method here, here we supposed to use transmission method when the cavity for the Q is required to measure, okay, so whichever the Q of the particular cavity is to measure. So, in that particular cavity, it is it is supposed to be had a, a two port or that particular cavity is supposed to be open there. And this cavity is to be connected to the slotted section okay slot resection or we can say that a standing wave detector there. slot resection with a, a probe carriage or we can say that a uh, can say that a standing wave detector there so it has a, a slot there and here we supposed to insert here a probe so then output of that particular tunable port or standing wave detector is given to the a power indicator there or we can say that a, a power meter the power that is transmitted to the cavity or transmitted by the cavity is measured using the a power emitter there. Okay, so that we will we need to find out there here for a given particular cavity how much is the RF signal is supposed to be propagating through the device. So, so that will be measured by this a power emitter there. So in that case, we are supposed to measure that a power at a different frequency. And then we are supposed to draw, draw a, a graph here. Okay, so we we'll, we need to draw a graph here. So in that case, that graph is supposed to be considered that with respect to that, what will be the a power with respect to the a frequency there. So in that case, if supposed to be considered, we consider that there will be a maximum power when we can consider that the frequency at which we will get the maximum power where we have the uh, uh, resonant frequency of the cavity and a signal frequency is a match there ok so according to that we find out the a with respect to power and a with respect to a different frequency ok so in that case we will get the power here this one 
So somewhere we will get the maximum power at some resonant frequency. And then from this, we are supposed to calculate that a bandwidth. Okay. That is about a 3 dB point. We are supposed to find out a 3 dB point and then we are supposed to find out a, a Q. So Q will be for this graph, Q will be what? What will be the resonant frequency and what will be the bandwidth? And that is used to find the, what will be the cavity of the Q. So he will get the bandwidth. This is about a range of frequency and where we are getting the maximum power we are getting the maximum power at a resonant frequency we will get a resonant frequency and we will get a bandwidth there. so this way we will calculate the q of the cavity that is about a cavity measurement using a, a transmission method so we thank you all of you we stop here